Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Today I am going to have a little bit of a play. Um, a play with creating art that's cheap and beautiful. So what am I doing? Instead of using my um, my $30 a litre flow troll, no, it's not $30 a litre. It's $75 for four litres in a big one. So, I don't know, it's probably about $20 a litre. Um, I'm using my $4, so $8 a litre white craft glue. Ah, and knocking things over in the process. And I'm also using um, not so high quality paint normally i would use the reeves um, fine artist acrylic rather than the intro there's a big difference in price there's about these are about two dollars cheaper a tube and the tubes are bigger so um and as you can see the Renault art are two dollars fifty a tube where i get them from so i've already squeezed some color into each of these um into each of these pots and I'm just going to go through and put about a 50% of the same like so it's going to be one third glue two thirds paint does that make sense I hope so it's just a rough estimate it's not to the gram it's not measured in any way shape or form it's just a uh, roughly that's about what I'm doing so then I'm going to take a broken popsicle stick <laughs> and stir that glue and paint together really like scrape the sides and get those really well combined and you're going to find much different to using Floetrol it goes really sticky and goopy um, and that's totally cool because we're going to add some water to get the runny consistency and um, the cool thing about white glue is it dries clear so once you start once it dries you're going to be just left with the color of the paint behind And as you can see, I just added in some water out of my little squeegee bottle. Just plain tap water. No issues really at all. And I'm just going to keep adding and stirring and adding and stirring until I get to a pourable consistency. Now what do I mean by pourable consistency? As you can see there, it's just gluing off the stick okay i want it to be as runny as runny honey so if you've got liquid honey and it's reasonably warm not been sitting in the fridge <laughs> then that is the consistency you are after but just make sure each time you're stirring that you actually get a really good stir um make sure it goes through see how it's getting runnier it's still a bit glubby still a bit too thick let's try again and once i've done this on the white i'm of course going to have to go through and do it on all of the other ones but i'm not going to make you sit through all of that this is just to give you a sense of just how much water i'm adding and how much stirring I'm doing as well because you know what this is a lot more stirring than I would normally do with Floetrol Floetrol is quite a runny and, and it, it acts as a thinner as well or an extender they call it see how much runnier that is now it's just running nicely off the stick so I'm just going to go around and Scrape the stick and all the sides. Make sure I don't have any clumpy, lumpy bits. Most of this is just air. 
and it's just running off beautifully. I do want it a little bit runnier than that. Okay. So one more batch of water. And then I'm going to let it stand while I do the other ones. Quite often what I find is I'll go through, I'll stir it to what I think is the right consistency. And then I'll go through all the other ones. And then when I come back to the original ones, it's thickened up a bit and I still need to add a bit more. So there we go. So I'm going to do the same to all the rest of these and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've mixed all my paints up to that same consistency as the white. And I just want to show you um, just how runny that white is. So if you... If you pick it up on the stick and it sits there but then when you tip the stick it runs off in a steady stream there's no lumpy bits that just keeps running now the one thing that I have noticed with regards to using the PVA and the cheaper paint and let's see if we can get my camera to read can you see how it kind of looks almost like beet cream it's got bumps and lumps lookings well actually the air bubbles and i don't get that with the flow troll and the higher quality paint so whether it's the pva or whether it's the paint or it's a combination of the two i can't tell you that but i do know that um those bubbles will come out eventually the only thing is you want them to come out before the paint goes hard because if they come out once the paint's going hard you're going to end up with holes in your painting now how many of you have old records hiding around in your basement somewhere um, throwing around in the back of a cupboard most people do most people have parents that do grandparents things like that so Hunt them out, make sure that they're not worth anything on Craigslist or Trade Me or wherever you are in the world. And what I've done here, and, and this is how I prepare my records. I put a, um, a layer of Duracell, you know, the book covering stuff that you use for your school books. Um, I put that across the whole of the back. It then makes it a wipeable surface, a waterproof surface, it, and it also blocks that hole in the back there, in the middle. Um, and then on the front, I always paint out my label, and I do that two or three days beforehand so that that layer of paint is nice and set and um, isn't going to start bubbling when the moisture from the new paint is added. So that's just a couple of hints and tips for prepping. I've had some paintings when I didn't paint over the label where the, um, the colour from the label seeped through into my paint. Most of them it looked quite funky and it added to it, but some of them I had to throw the painting away. So just a, a word of warning. What I'm doing here is I've just got some more of these little tuna tins um, which I use a safe edge um, can opener to take the lids off and then I can use the lids later to seal them up if I'm keeping them if there's leftover paint but when I've used them I just let them go hard and dry and then I can turn them over and use them as a support the reason for that is you're going to have paint running off the edges and when you've got paint running off the edges, you want to be able to get your fingers underneath, lift it up, move it, etc. Without spoiling the paint by, you know, getting your fingers on those edges. So, that's hint number one. <laughs> Alright. So, what I'm going to do here is a basic flip cup. But the next thing that we actually need to do before we do that is to add our secret ingredient. And our secret ingredient is oil or silicon oil. 
and you, there's a number of different ways you can buy it you can buy it as a lubricant spray from the hardware store uh, this particular personal lubricant is dimethicone which is silicone uh, the other Durex play in a green bottle it's not so just make sure you read the ingredients um, people use treadmill oil that you can buy on Amazon so lots of options and all we're going to do is put two or three drops in each of these two colors the pink or crimson red it's called and the lemon yellow two or three drops Whoops, that was a bit more than two or three. And I'm just going to stir that through, not vigorously, but just enough to get it mixed into the paint and get it in there. That yellow is a really good example of how bubbly this paint is. Let's see if you can get that. See all those bubbles? Um, and by stirring the silicon in what happens when oil is in water it rises to the top right and these are water-based paints so this is our self our hidden ingredient <laughs> all right so the next thing we're going to do is going to get a cup a dispensing utensil anything will do really honestly anything will do i'm going to use this plastic container which came with bouncing putty in it it was my kids toy you can use skinny containers big containers actually the skinnier they are the more layers you can get but then the skinnier they are the taller they need to be to have the right amount of paint now this one here is roughly about enough paint to cover a record and you need one milliliter of paint per square inch if that makes sense so a 30 milliliters is a fluid ounce so for 30 square inches you'd need a ounce of paint fluid ounce now what I'm going to do with this painting, one thing to be really aware of, when you're using black in a painting, use it super, super sparingly, or as we're going to do it, as a background colour. So, um, gonna when, what we're going to do is we're going to put the paint in here in multiple layers, and then we're going to flip it upside down and let it out. So the last one in, now the first one in is going to be the last one out and the last one in is going to be the first one out so just remember that when you're layering so for that reason I usually start off with white and then I'm going to put in some red and some yellow and this actually looks quite lumpy I'm going to put in just a little bit of black and then we're going to start the whole process again. Now, using the PVA, it, this paint has thickened quite dramatically. Um, it's whoops. Uh oh. Okay. That's how. How do we save that? We turn the record upside down and scrape it off. The whole record's going to be covered in paint anyway, so it's not a biggie. We just didn't want it necessarily there. Okay. So, some more. The higher up you go, the higher up you pour from, the more it's going to mix the different layers together. So... A little bit more black, a little bit more yellow, and 
and the last of the red. Sorry, you can't see this through my hands. So as you can see, it can be a messy process. This can be fun with kids if you want to. Um, if you're happy for them to be covered in paint and for your entire area to be covered in paint. I know a lot of grandmas who have amazing fun with their children using this paint process. So now many of you are probably thinking, I can't lift that, flip that over without spilling it. It's a full cup. You don't have to. Grab hold of the record and put it on the top. And you don't have to use a record, by the way. You can use a canvas. You can use any flat surface. And then we just flip it back over and then we have a perfectly flipped cup. How's it getting any easier than that? So, next step is to remove the cup, oddly enough. But before we do, I'm going to pour the rest of this black around the cup. And just make sure we've got enough paint on here. As I said, you can work out how much paint you need. And it always pays to have extra. So there we go. May as well use up our paint, right? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Three, two, one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it and then pull it back like that, all right, rather than just picking it up. So that then if you hold a cup with paint coming out of it, it's going to cause dripping marks. But by doing the push and pull back, which I learned from Anne-Marie Rudderhoff, you get to um, keep the paint from being disturbed by the drips. Here we go. Wow. Look at that, guys. Now, just letting the cup run out the rest of the paint, because as I said, this is thicker than I normally paint with. When I'm using Floetrol. Look at the pretty cup. Okay, so... You see this piece here? Let me zoom you in. So this is where a piece of silicon has already bubbled up to the top. And on its way up, it's pushed layers of paint aside to get up there. And that's what we're seeing right there. And I'm seeing other ones of those starting to appear as well. And then you've got the air bubbles. And when the air bubbles pop, you tend not to get the multi-layered thing because they're just sitting there at the top. All right, zoom you back out so you can see what I'm going to do next. How much fun can we have? Okay, so as you can see, the, that paint is spreading quite nicely. And so the next target is to cover the entire record. But before we do that, I'm going to pop some of these bubbles and entice some of that um, silicon to come to the top just by lightly warming the paint with this cheap $2 shop or dollar store, whatever country you're in. If you don't want to use a th this, you can pop your bubbles with a, a pin or a toothpick or anything like that. Um, but these are really simple to use. They're really cheap. And quite honestly, you can be right up to here before you start to feel warm. And that's as close as you need to be to the paint. All right. Let's pop a few more of those bubbles that are coming up with the paint being that little bit warmer. How does it get any better than that? 
Now, see all of these that are starting to appear through here? These are silicon cells. These are the cells that are coming up. I'm going to zoom you back in again. So there's our original one. And these ones here have all started to come up as I've warmed the paint. And we've also got more over here. This isn't caused by paint being burnt. It's caused by the warming of the paint inviting the silicon to rise up to the top. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to tilt. We just pick that record up, as I said, having that um, finger space underneath by the tins creates a lot of ease for that. And we're just going to allow it just to run to the edge and maybe even over the edge just a little bit. Not so much initially. So we want to get that paint, make sure the paint goes all the way over the entire canvas or record before we start losing any. Because you don't want to tip it all off the side and then go, oh no, I don't have enough. All right, so there we go. We have covered our canvas. Once it's covered, what I like to do is just set it back down again and have a look. See how those cells have stretched themselves out as they get pushed and pulled around the um, the space they stretch out and they become bigger and yummier and more delicious okay so this is a lot more bubbles in this paint than I would normally have in my flow troll paint really it's quite dynamically different so got a lot more of a galaxy type effect as all those bubbles get popped so you can see the interaction of the um, of the paint the different colors so we've got quite a an orange starting to happen here where the yellow and the crimson have joined up and then over here where it's the yellow and the Mars black it's going almost greenish and then very pink I'm not a big fan of pink but I do like these cells they look like white and red blood cells in the blood <laughs> Okay, so and then there where the, the red and the white and the black are all playing together nicely. We've got a nice little grey over here that's got a pink tinge to it. It's very cool. It's totally unrepeatable. This style of painting, when you do one of these, you are creating a one-off piece of art that nobody in the world could ever duplicate as paint because it's just not possible possible so what I need to be aware of is making sure that the paint is not too thick um, not so much at this time of the year here in New Zealand it's um, we're just going into winter and everything's drying extremely slowly um, but especially if you're in a warm environment you need to be covering up your paint so painting so that it doesn't get um, does, doesn't dry too quickly because when it dries too quickly dun, 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 you end up with a painting that the top has dried, the underside layers has not, and then as the underside layer dries, I'm just rearranging my pots that are underneath, just so it's well supported and not bending. I found that records tend to bend 
a bit and then the paint runs off which isn't quite so cool um ugh, more paint on my hands than i realized so yeah be aware of what else is going on um around you and how thick your paint is the thinner the paint the less likely you are to crack the thicker the paint, the cooler and longer you need to have it dry for so that the whole lot of the paint can dry in an even method and you don't get the cracking. Okay, I'm going to go over it with the torch again because I'm still seeing lots of air bubbles. Check out my other videos. I don't get anywhere near this number of bubbles in my other videos because I'm using the flow trial and water. But what I wanted to do today was give you a how can you start? How do you get the bubbles? How do you get the cells? How do you get it with cheap ingredients like PVA and intro acrylics? So there we go. Um, anything else I need to tell you uh, once you've got it all covered you're more than welcome to keep tilting it and keep playing with it and tilt some bits off like you just saw me tilt this edge off partly because it hadn't actually run over the side uh, with the paint but partly because it was a bit of a messy bit and I didn't really like it it's totally up to you how much you tilt off, which parts you tilt off. And um, once again, these air bubbles are driving me batty. So I'm going to get you down and show you what we've got. And then I'm going to leave it to dry and come back and show you the finished final product so let's get you down okay so this bit down here really does look green and that is the mars black and the yellow mixed together um play with your colors before before you put them on a on a canvas see what they do to each other when they play together Normally in a painting I'll try and keep the red and the white apart because I'm not a fan of pink. And uh, my point of view is I'm going to paint so that I love it. If nobody else loves it, it can live with me. <laughs> um, now see all those dots. Those are all the air bubbles that have popped revealing the layer underneath. Um, if your paint doesn't have those that much air bubbles in it, you're not going to have that many little freckle dots, uh, as I call them. And you're just going to get those big silicon cells that stretched out and went yummy. Mm. Okay. Now, if when you're mixing, you get a lump in the paint and it is still there and you can spot it, you can grab two pins or two toothpicks and pick it out. Because just be aware that once it dries, it's going to be really obvious when there's a lump there because everything else is going to be nice and smooth and flat. So even though you can hardly see it in the painting, that's what happens so now I've got you up on the stand again um, I'm just going to do that exact thing I'm going to grab a couple of pins and I use push pins instead of tins when I'm using canvases I put a push pins in each of the four corners see this giant great lump here So that big lump 
focus there. That was sitting on my paint. Big lump. And you could hardly see it while the paint was wet. But of course paint shrinks when it dries and it gets thinner. And that would have stuck out like a big sticky outy thing. <laughs> big sticky outy thing. So there you go. Even though it's pink, I'm really liking this one. <laughs> it's cool. And um, I'm just having one more look at how many bubbles there are. I know that some people, they mix their paint well in advance and allow it to sit for a little while before before pouring and that allows some of those bubbles to come up out of the actual paint but if you look at my white let's see if I can capture it there we go there's still a lot of bubbles sitting in my white um, even though it's only a little thin layer there is bubbles so get you know I highly recommend using a torch getting those bubbles out in any other way is an exceedingly painful process if you go around and try and stab them all with a pin it's not fun I know some people do it but I don't recommend it so I'm gonna see you well you're gonna see me again you're going to see me again in once this is dry, which in your time is three, two, one. Okay, so here it is, and disaster has seemingly struck if you don't like cracking and crazing. Uh, my beautiful, stunning pink artwork has gone interesting. It's not I definitely don't like it but it's definitely interesting that is how I would word it now I would say my suggestion to you if you this is interesting because this is actually what happened to my first couple of pieces of art that I did um, when I used PVA and house paint so uh, yeah, interesting that it has done this. It has a really cool combination though. I actually quite like it. It's weird, but I like it. Um, so, anyway, what I'm inviting you guys to do is... If you use PVA only and no Floetrol, no GAC 800, no any other weird additional bits, put a message in the comments below and um, let me know your recipe. Let me know how you do this and, um, and I will have a play with some of your recipes and see if I can perfect it. And... How much fun can we have playing with PVA glue? How much? How much indeed. Hello darling. My baby has come home oh. from school. <laughs> My baby, he's 13. Um, <laughs> he's awesome. 13, 13, 14. So, yeah, there it is. How much fun can you have trying to perfect your PVA recipe? Is it PVA? <laughs> it was PVA. PVA and paint. Looks like it's cracking. It is cracking. It has cracked. So, thanks guys. Have fun. I adore you. I'll see you in Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group. And um, subscribe and hit that bell button if you want to watch more of my videos. See you soon. Bye.